In the next series of videos, we are going to cover section 3.2, the growth of functions. And this particular section is going to be important to help us to determine how to compare the efficiency of algorithms. In particular, we will compare, we'll use the concept of the growth of functions to compare the efficiency of the algorithms we looked at previously. So in both computer science and in mathematics, there are many times when we care about how fast a function grows. Most importantly for us, we want to understand how quickly an algorithm can solve a problem as the size of the input grows. As I mentioned before, we will compare the efficiency of two different algorithms for solving the same problem. For example, the binary and the linear search algorithms. We can also determine whether it is practical to use a particular algorithm as the input grows. So as I mentioned before, we'll study these questions in section 3.3. But first of all, we have to learn the tools and in particular what properties identify the growth of functions and how to work with these in order to be able to apply them to algorithms. Okay, so by the end of this section, what will you be able to do? So you are going to be able to define the notions of big O, big omega, and big theta. That is, what does it mean for a function f of x to be big O of another function g of x, or respectively big omega and big theta? You'll also be able to determine big O, big omega, and big theta estimates of polynomials, logarithms, powers, and exponential functions. But first you might be asking yourself, what are these properties? What does big O, big omega, and big theta mean? And how do we find them? Okay, so let's begin with the definition of big O notation. So we know that it's a property on functions, so let's let f and g be functions from the set of integers or the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. We say that a function f of x is big O of g of x if there are constants c and k such that the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to c times the absolute value of g of x whenever x is bigger than k. So that's the statement and the definition of what it means for f of x to be big O of g of x. But in order to really understand it, probably it's more helpful to look at an illustration. So this picture illustrates why f of x is big O of g of x, or when f of x is big O of g of x. So f of x is big O of g of x if we can find two constants, c and k, so that the following happens. So that we can take the function g of x, multiply it by this value c, and in that case, this function c times g of x grows faster than our function f of x. So that means that the values of c of g of x are bigger than or equal to the values of f of x for some point beyond this value k. So there is a constant c and there is a constant k so that c multiplied by g of x is bigger than or equal to the function or the values of the function of f of x for every x bigger than k. And as I mentioned before, this is read as f of x is big O of g of x. However, we could also say that g asymptot asymptotically dominates f. So why, would, so why would we phrase it in this way? Well, we can think of drawing a vertical asymptote at k. So drawing a straight line at, at the value x equal to k, and then from that point on, we know that there's this constant c, so that the constant multiple c times g of x is bigger than or equal to the function f of x for every x beyond this asymptote. So that means that g asymptotically dominates f. So the constant c and k are the constant c and k are called witnesses to the relationship that f of x is bigger is big O of g of x. And so in order to show that f of x is big O of g of x, we simply need to find a pair of witnesses, a value of c and k, that has this, this property here. And we only need to find one pair of witnesses, even though there are infinitely many. 